Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working through the NPCs of Stardew Valley. We've been chugging along for quite a while now and we're starting to run out of non-marriage villagers. We're not completely out yet though. Last week we talked about Dick, sorry, Willy, and this week we're going to cover one of the permanent never-aging children in the town. Jazz is never going to grow up. No, not because she's going to die, probably. Stardew Valley is just some kind of twisted time loop, or perhaps an afterlife. I don't know, doesn't matter. Either way, let's check out the 10th-ish candidate who might be the wizard's child. Jazz lives at Marnie's ranch with Marnie, her aunt, and Shane, her godfather. And yes, I saw all your comments. Thank you. This kid is living with the absolute dream team of guardians, isn't she? We have Shane, who might actually be the most troubled person in the valley, though it's stiff competition. But when we think about it, no one else has to be physically carried to the doctor to get their stomach pumped, so it's probably Shane. And then there's Marnie, who claims to love animals but mostly loves the microwave, who sneaks a grown mustachioed man into her bedroom to avoid the small town rumors about an elected official's secret relationship with a local business owner, who has a lit fireplace in a room full of hay directly in front of Jazz's room, running full blast in the middle of summer, who mocks her nephew as he works through his chemical dependency issues well, yeah. Anyway, there are reasons that some people dislike Marnie, and we've already talked about many of them. Today was supposed to be about Jazz. Let's get back to her. So, your parents are dead, Jazz. Well, isn't that a bummer? Why don't you go hang out with all the other cool kids from broken families? You'll fit right in with Alex and his dead mom, for example, or Penny and her non-existent father. And speaking of broken families, let's circle back to a topic that comes up a lot. The wizard being pretty much everyone's father. I've seen a bit of discussion out there wondering if Jazz is perhaps the daughter of the wizard and possibly Marnie. Marnie lives in the forest, Jazz has purple hair. You know what, that's enough. I mean, maybe. But we hear from Jazz herself that Shane was friends with her parents, so I don't think that's really the case here. I think she legitimately just has a couple of normal, albeit unalive, human parents. And I desperately hope that Shane was in a better place when they picked him to take care of their daughter, because if not... Yikes. Let's get back to Jazz's living situation though, because I want to take a kind of snoopy look around her room. I mentioned briefly in Marnie's video that Jazz has a cute little dollhouse in her room. In fact, other than being directly attached to a fire hazard, she's actually got a pretty awesome room for a kid. She's got a giant plushie, the same one that I think we can get from Gunther, right? Her own potted palm tree? A TV that she apparently never uses. There's a little paint set, an interactable item on the ground that just says a mess of arts and crafts, and there's a Junimo coloring book, which means Junimos are like canon, people know about them, it's not just us, okay? She also has a single table, and there are a couple very depressing items we can find on there. Apparently, Jazz, for some reason, has an antique clock and a little golden trinket box. I don't believe that these items are referenced anywhere else in the game, but if we think a little bit about why those things might be here, I'm guessing they're probably heirlooms from her parents. Maybe the little antique clock was like a mantle clock that they had in their home, and I'm guessing the golden trinket box is probably a small jewelry box that she received from her mother. Something to remember them by, you know? And perhaps she'll be able to wear her mom's favorite jewelry someday when she gets a little bit older. That's kind of a bittersweet little reminder that Jazz walks past every single day. Also, Jazz doesn't have a dresser, but neither does Shane, so did Jazz and Shane have to move here without a single set of spare clothes or what? Are they on the run because it's actually Shane's fault that Jazz's parents are dead and he kidnapped her and ran away from the authorities? No, probably not. Anyway, the most interesting part of Jazz's room to me is actually the two sets of toys that we haven't talked about yet. She has a neat little dollhouse in the corner of her room and a jack-in-the-box right nearby. Jazz's dollhouse reminds me in some strange and uncomfortable way of the Death House introduction to Curse of Strahd. That might not mean anything to you and it's not really relevant to this video, but I thought I would put it out there just for those of you who play D&D. When you interact with the dollhouse, you can see that Jazz has displayed the whole family around the dinner table. But wait! For some reason, Grandpa is wedged under the bed. 
I've previously speculated that Jazz perhaps saw Lewis under Marnie's bed late at night, or that he might have made a mad dash for a hiding space when a visitor came calling to Marnie's home late in the evening. After all, Mayor Lewis does have dinner with Marnie on Tuesday, fall 9th, and eventually goes to bed with her that night. Maybe Jazz is just acting that situation out in her dollhouse, putting Lewis under the bed because he's hiding, or maybe because Jazz doesn't like that Marnie is spending more time with Lewis than with Jazz herself. All of these observations are based on the idea that the grandpa doll is Lewis. There's no reason it has to be, and her display could be related to something more sinister. I have seen some of those suggestions online as well, but I think it's simply Jazz acting out a scene that, you know, that she's observed, with perhaps a slight twist of humor. It should be noted, though, that at Eight Hearts, Jazz does say that grown-ups are usually mean and boring, but that the farmer is different. That's a little bit uncomfortable to hear, since Jazz doesn't spend a lot of time with grown-ups that we see. There's Marnie, of course, and Shane. She has class with Penny, who is nothing but kind to her. There's her visit to Harvey at the doctor's on Winter 18, but that's not very significant. So who else could be mean to her? Lewis? Pretty interesting. The other creepy item in Jazz's room is the jack-in-the-box, and I think this one's creepier. When you interact with it, you're told that he's sprawled out, his arms bent at grotesque angles, his hollow eyes peer coldly into the distance. That is creepy. But is it creepy because Jazz leaves her jack-in-the-box laying that way, or is it just that concerned ape is afraid of and or disturbed by the toys? It's hard to say. I don't think this is necessarily as relevant to Jazz's life or the things that she's experienced as, you know, say the dollhouse, but I think it's interesting that she keeps the doll on the ground in its current state, like all exploded out of the box. Can you imagine waking up in the middle of the night and seeing that thing's face, twisted into a contorted grin staring up at you from the corner of the room? What do you do, throw a blanket over it? Pull the covers over your head and pretend that its soulless black eyes aren't peering deep into your very core? Could you sleep there? I could not. That is all that I am trying to say. So Jazz is a cute, shy kid who giggles and lets you play dolls with her, but she thinks grown-ups are mean and boring. Her parents died before the start of the game, and she lives with some of the worst guardians in the valley. She's forbidden to leave her home after 6pm, which, weird, but she still thinks it's fun to live on a farm. If she didn't have a creepy little dollhouse back there, we might never think any more of her than that she's just a kid. Even her eight heart scene is basically just a disguised way to give the player an upgrade on some forage that's, you know, almost certainly not a priority by that point. At the end of the day, Jazz just seems to fall short in interesting dialogue when compared to most of the valley. At least, we'll always be able to imagine her as the creepy little axe murderer that she might, hopefully, someday grow up to be. What do you think about Jazz? Is she going to kill me in my sleep for posting this? Let me know down in the comments below. And I will see you all in the next one.